Well, the horrors of war all too real for our men and women in uniform and what they see on the battlefield often haunts them for quite a long time. Up to 20% of our vets in Iraq and Afghanistan suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and they suffer like this. They weren't really sure where I was shot because there was uh, blood everywhere. It's a little difficult to talk about sometimes. We saw the charred bodies from the explosions and from and seeing all the debris. Um, you didn't know when you drove through a crowd whether there was a suicide bomber or not. I mean, we have a hard time with a lot of stuff coming back, just, you know, traffic going through, going through malls, little crowded areas, things like that. But it doesn't just impact this generation of soldiers. It affected the greatest generation, too. Often, troops from World War II suffered in silence when PTSD was a disorder without a name. Well, Lila Levinson understands this firsthand. She stumbled upon her father's 1940s photos and discovered a legacy of grief that actually plagued her family for decades. She writes about it in her new book, Gated Grief. Boy, and what a powerful story. I mean, it was your father's silence that actually inspired you to write the book, right? Yes, when I found those photographs, it suddenly opened up a whole new window on my childhood that was really encased by my father's silence. His complete inability to talk about my mother, who we last saw when I was five, never had any idea what had happened to her, why she never returned. He couldn't begin to explain that or to allow my brothers and me to grieve at all. So the silence was deafening in our home. And it's interesting when we look back at how our men and women in uniform suffered from, from previous wars, everyone, oh, they've gone crazy, they've gone mentally ill, and nobody, it seems like there was such a lack of respect for, for what they went through. And it was PTSD, and we know it so well now. Um, but you write in the book how you don't even have to be someone that experienced something traumatic, just living with a parent who, who went through something traumatic, it, 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 it infects the whole family. Right, it totally seeps through the silence. And we have put World War II GIs on a pedestal, calling them the greatest generation, without recognizing how their silence carried their trauma. If you ask any child of a World War II veteran about their fathers, almost the first word they'll say is silent. They never talked about the war. Yet our homes were filled with that repressed grief. And when you repress grief, you really don't allow the other emotions to come through. So my generation never had the full range ex of experience of joy and happiness. And we're the generation that's made Prozac a household term. I think there's a huge amount of depression in baby boomers as a result. And it's interesting, uh, you're absolutely right, because if you look at, at the number of people that are responding to your book and your blog, this one entry caught our attention. My brother and I both suffer from our father's PTSD and my mother died for it. I take pills every day to maintain normalcy and my brother struggles in his own ways. Now that we have somewhere to acknowledge the trauma that we have lived as children of Vietnam vets, where do we go? These are the kind of questions you're even getting on your blog. How do you stop this unhealed trauma and push forward to keep it from not reverberating within the family? I think it is so important that we show our returning vets that we want to hear their stories. We want to know what they have suffered. World War II GIs, when they came back from Europe and Japan, from having witnessed terrible atrocity, including the Holocaust, like my father. Yeah, your dad liberated a Nazi liberated camp, camp, right? Liberated witnessed these camps. People stateside didn't want to hear the stories. They wanted to get on with their lives, let the good times roll. And those veterans didn't know where else, where to go. They didn't know what else to do besides lock the stories up inside themselves. It is essential that we not force our veterans into silence, that we show them we are present for them. It's more important than ever since we have an all-volunteer army. So few of us are impacted on a daily level by the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that we show the veterans today 
you know what? You can come to us with our stories. And there are writing workshops all around the country that are, are enabling veterans to learn the strategy of telling stories, to learn how to tell them slowly and in a safe way so they don't just go into their homes, go to their families, and feel like, if I don't lock these stories up, they'll spill over and wound my children. So we have a process, but the second part, you don't just teach a veteran how to write their story, we need to hear their stories. We need to create space in our society for them to come and share them with us. The book is Gated Grief. Very powerful. Lila, thanks so much for thanks joining so us. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate Kira. it. Thank you.